All right, here we go. Let's do a box of 89 Donruss. Um, it's just just an incredible break, especially for the money. 10 or 15 bucks a box. Uh, the Griffey in a 10. I think it's at 300. So, of course, there's other Hall of Famers and such to, to pull from here. But uh, we'll start with the lucky pack right here. So, uh, depending on how bad the wax is stuck to your cards, that'll play a role in how quick you can open the packs. But we're not on a race here, so let me tilt the camera down. We got some glare. So, tilting it back up. Bezio, that's, uh, it's got the wax stain, though. So, Bizio, I'll just make a stack of all the cards that I'll look at later. <laughs> this pack's got shilling, wax stain shilling on the back, so two good ones, but they both got the wax stains on them. It's Tony Gwynn Diamond Kings. Pocket looks pretty clean. Most times I'll just toss away the back card, you know, unless it's like Griffey or Schilling or Bezio, but um, when it's got the wax stain. I know somebody told me you can use like pantyhose to fix it, but it seems like a lot of work. Unless you're looking at like a, looks like a gem mint Griffey, and you just need to get that stain off the back. If you know how to do it, I guess, I mean, why not? Tons of trash when you do these breaks, too. There's a Brett MVP. I like that one. It's always nice doing these older breaks and not having to deal with the uh, around 93, 94. Some of the companies changed the uh, card stock or the the way the cards were made so they stick together. Like I mean, some of the sets I can think of would be like uh, 95 Pinnacle, you know, like 96 Leaf and stuff like that. There's a nice clean marking, but um. Yeah, it's great being able to just flip through the cards and not having to peel each one from the last one. There's a 4040 Club Kinseiko. So you must have gotten that in 88. Um, let's see. The most Kens I've pulled in a box of this, I think, I think I pulled three. And I've been skunked many, many times. But when you pay $10 for a box, you don't really feel that bad about it. Here's a nice Maddox. That looks pretty clean. Most of the cards will look really clean straight from the pack from the naked eye. But when you get them under the light and take closer looks at them, you'll find a lot more flaws. Um, tens are pretty hard in this stuff. If you watch my recent videos, um, I've been pulling a lot of nines on this on this set. So there's something I'm missing. Maybe somebody can fill me in. It might be the right to left centering. But uh, definitely have a lot of... Definitely need my some work on this set still. Certain sets I just seem to uh, struggle with. I definitely struggle with 87 Donruss baseball. Um, there's a Dawson. There's the Hawk. So we're still waiting on some of the key rookies. And they might just come in bunches. There's Flash Gordon. I always pull him aside. Maybe put it into a big lot or something. I don't know. Most of the cards I just throw away. Um, I know it seems wasteful, but I don't really know. Who would want these? The uh, commons, anyway. There's Julio Franco. That wax is really stuck. Another Dawson. 
and a bunch of commons. That one's stuck. Whoops, we dropped the car. It's a common though. There's Sandberg, there's a Hall of Famer. Um Molitor. I mean I'll I'll if I think it's a ten, most of the Hall of Famers I'll I'll send in. Um I mean even if you get a nine, you can uh break even. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Not that I'm just slabbing cards to make money, but if you are thinking about that aspect of it, um, just because you get a 9 or an 8 on a set like this doesn't mean it's, it's not worth anything. Cards that are slabbed are always worth more than raw. So I'll get people dropping comments. You know, there's always... And this happens with every, I think, every aspect of uh, YouTube and all aspects in, in life. Um, there's Flash Gordon again just like dropping negative comments on the videos and it doesn't really bother me I just most times I'll just say like oh thank you for that because <laughs> I don't really know what to say you know people are saying you're wasting your money sending this and that in and I'm just like people can send in whatever cards they want honestly if it makes you happy and that's what you like to collect then go for it nobody has all the answers in this hobby I'm always trying to find more. There's a Gwyn. It's got a dinged corner though. Rafi. See that one's off centered really bad. That's like 90-10. That's as off centered as you'll see one. There's a pretty clean pocket. A little off centered. Um, this might be a clean skunking. There's a shilling off centered. So um, that's just the way some of the boxes go. You know, sometimes the cards are centered really good. And then sometimes you get some dead boxes. Think of how how many they printed. I'm not even want to know how many copies of the Griffey there are of this card. You think? You think a million? You think there's that many? I don't know. Because back during this time, like the, the short printed cards were like what ten thousand, twenty thousand. During this year, they didn't have any short printed or anything. Okay, there's some. That one's pretty much miscut top to bottom. So. You can get a good uh, indication of the uh, centering right off the bat. Especially when you've been around a set enough. There's a Schmidt. Looks pretty good. That Schmidt does. Davis. I always pull him aside. And I just have a big, like, a couple big. 5,000 count boxes with all my like junk wax stars because I don't want to throw away the stars or the Hall of Famers The ones I don't slab. I don't know what I'll do with them I still have the time to like put them all in the lots and this and that but they They are cool to look back on you know browse through them on a rainy day uh, We got about 15 packs left so we're Moving pretty good there's a Bonds. That's nice. I like the photo on that Bonds. Julio Franco. We'll pull him. He, he's not a Hall of Famer though, right? He's in the Hall of... The Hall of Very Good, I think. Uh, Brett. It's a nice pocket. It's off-centered, though. These pack fresh cards, I say it in every video. You just can't beat them. That's a nice Bezio. That one looks pretty good. Top to bottom's good. Right to left looks really good. So that might be one that eventually makes its way out to California. And, uh... Do you guys want me to keep doing the 500 card orders? It takes me a little longer to prep them, you know, just because i got to find worthy cards to send in. Or I could just break it up and do like 200 card orders. What do you guys want to see? I think the 500s are pretty epic. It's, 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 it's fun prepping those. Um, takes some time. Most days I try to add about... 
15 to 20 to the order per day. There it is. Top of the pack, though, so it's got a ding on it. Um, yeah, it's got some rough corners, but you see that one. That's just straight from the pack. I've noticed some of the ones at the top of the pack have that. So whenever you're pulling a Griffey like this or a card you're looking for, you want it to be in the middle of the pack, if that makes sense. So, I mean, this is like a, man, that's like a seven. We still got ten packs left, though. Uh, Sheffield too. I think I think the Sheffield goes for twenty five or thirty. I mean, you would almost think with the Griffey selling for that much, it would push some of the other key players up, but I don't think it has really. Not to say they won't go in the future up. That's something to monitor. I would say shillings about what thirty bucks for a ten. Oh, we haven't even talked about Randy Johnson. See, that one's got the ding, too. So that's just, you know, this case has been sitting around for 30 years. There's Thriller. I actually have a, about a half case of this left, and then I have an, another sealed 20 box that I got a couple weeks ago. It was like 10 or 11 bucks a, a box, and uh, just, I can't really pass that up. It's hard not to want that. There's a shilling. It's off center though. See how thin that bottom is. It's got a little edge problem too, so that's probably like a seven. So don't. I always say this, but don't just break a box and then f figure since oh it came straight from the pack, it's got to be gem man or mint because it doesn't really work that way. I mean, I see some pretty rough cards come out of the packs. Plus, I don't think the quality control or the card stocks back then were as solid as they are now. And then, of course, I'm going to get an 89 upper deck break uh, uploaded here soon. I'll, I'll have... One or two of those up in the next week. I don't know if I'm going to break all the boxes because they're so expensive. So I might just sell some off and break even. Kind of depends on how I'm doing. So far it hasn't been bad. Um, I think I've pulled a couple eights and maybe a nine. I don't think I've pulled a ten. I mean, I would say in a whole case you might have like one or two tens, and that's if you're lucky. Just kind of depends. Three packs, so. Chris Sabo and those goggles. It's a cool Oreo. It was like 59 scoreless innings. That's amazing. How many uh, career wins for Oreo? Was it like maybe 175 or somewhere in that range? We haven't pulled uh, Sandy Alomar either. He usually pops up a couple times in these breaks. So I think we're going to get skunked on Sheffield and Randy. That doesn't happen very often. This is one of the, the weaker ones I've broke lately. See that top one's creased. There's Bichette. I always pull him aside. He's a good player. Caminiti. There's a Fisk Diamond King. Pretty nice looking bow. Just a little off center. And... Ramones, that's his rookie. So that's it, guys. Here's the stack of like notables and Hall of Famers, and there's some of those, and then the carnage. So I'll clean up. Um, we definitely didn't pull a gem mint 10 Griffey, but the effort was there. I'll get this one uploaded.